All right, everybody, it is day three of the Attorney Marketing Funnel Boot Camp. Um, and as you can see, our class has shrunk even more. And this is the purpose of boot camp. Boot, boot camp, I love doing boot camps because it makes you do the work, right? The whole idea of attending a boot camp is to get the work done. And so as a reward for you getting the work done, you get all of the live instruction attention because you've done what you're supposed to do. Now, life happens. It's not that those that aren't here um, couldn't, you know, didn't want to do it. Something probably came up or whatever the case may be. And that's totally fine. But what that means is they need to do that work first before adding even more to their plates. OK, you guys are already ready to go forward. And tonight is going to be about your video sales letter and YouTube ads. And I made an executive decision with regard to the YouTube ads, and I'm going to point you to where your resource for the ads will be. Let me share my screen. Since I am not yet an expert in YouTube ads, I feel it's better instead of me regurgitating what I am learning, okay, since I am new to it as well, instead of me regurgitating what I am learning about YouTube ads, I'm giving you the resources that I am using to learn from, okay? There are two videos, one that I've watched three times and one that I just started watching that one, you know, are very relevant from people who have been doing YouTube ads for five years, okay? They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on YouTube ads. All I was going to do anyway was to make notes from what they taught me and give them to you but I thought that was a disservice because I don't know it well enough to make sure I'm giving you everything. So instead of doing it that way, my decision is to give you the resources. Here's the YouTube ads uh, training video number one that you need to watch. It's in the Attorney Marketing Funnel Bootcamp module. Um, and here's the YouTube ads training video number two that you need to watch. Now, I will make sure that you've watched those videos by providing an assessment. Once you finish the assessment, then you'll get a link to join us as we do our YouTube ads together, hands on and live, okay? But it doesn't make any sense for me to teach you what they're teaching you when they're the experts. They're, they're I mean, they break it down, they do the screenshots and they do, they do everything step by step by step. And both of these videos were done this year. One was just five months ago and one was 11 months ago. And again, you'll see their receipts, how much they've spent. They're going to show you the back office. They're going to be the best sources for all of us to execute on this training. I am actually about to execute my own video sales letter. So this has been very, very helpful to me. So I know it will be helpful to you. I've listened to them and that first video, especially three times. And I can do everything I need to do with him, but I learn even more by watching the second video. Okay, so that's your homework for this weekend is to watch your YouTube ad training and be prepared for the assessment on Monday. Now, what we're going to spend this evening on is the funnel. Remember, we have already done one funnel and it was a simple funnel, right? That funnel was, was a nice funnel and we love that funnel and it was great, but we're going to do a different funnel tonight. So let me give you the funnel link. Let me see here go back to the beginning here and we're going to rename it before I give you the link. Now, again, these, these funnels um, will only work if you have click funnels, either the um, full version or the paid or the, or the, or the, um, the 14 day free term, free trial. So this is your uh, notary video sales funnel. All right, I'm gonna click on share funnel and copy. I'm gonna drop it in the chat. And then on, on Monday, I will make sure I put it in the group when I upload everything else for everybody who hasn't been able to participate so far. So you have now in the chat a copy, a link that would allow for you, if you've got the subscription to ClickFunnels, either the paid or the free trial, if you open up um, this funnel, when you're logged in, it will automatically populate and upload into your account, okay? You don't have to do any technical, anything with it. They'll do it all on its own. Now let's take a look at it. Let's go to the funnel itself. Now, 
there's going to have to be a lot of changing that you do to this to get it on brand. Everybody here has, a, has, has completed the branding your business class that was taught by um, Brittany Bowman. Brittany is an amazing marketer. She's an amazing notary. She's got a very flourishing business down in Florida. She really helped me start to understand how important it was to make sure everything that I did was, was on brand, right? And on brand, and I won't go through and reteach it, but what she taught me was, when you have a logo and there's colors in that logo, you wanna to try to incorporate it in every aspect of your marketing and everything that touches your potential customer, okay? So as you notice here, this, this, is, this doesn't look like it's on brand for me all the way because the Notary Nerds icon is in black and red and white, okay? I wanna show you another funnel to show you what the difference, when it, what it looks like when something is on brand versus something that's not on brand, okay? This is more on brand. The little border is in red. I've got some red highlights here. It's all about the black and the white and the red for me. Keep that in mind as you go through this funnel that I gave you the link for as you edit it. You must edit it in such a way that it's gonna be on brand for you, okay? All right, so let's go back over into the other funnel. Now, you are going to have to do two videos, okay? One video is going to be called your, um, I guess we could call it your intro video, okay? Because it's only gonna be three to four minutes in length and it's gonna be addressing a pain point for your audience. And it's going to be inviting them to a free webinar, okay? So your webinar is going to be, this, it, this video only has to be about three minutes. And I'm about to show you an example of what, a, what this webinar looks like or what that video should look like. Let me make sure I've got the right one here. Okay, here it is. Actually, mine is about eight minutes. So you don't want it to be, I'm going to change that. I want to make that no more than. 10 minutes and the second video is going to be over 10 minutes because your second video is actually going to be your webinar okay and it's 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 air dropping over to my phone i'm sorry over to my computer so i'll have that up for you in just a second any questions so far about anything that we've discussed anybody um, so, so far, one, uh, um, Monica, I'm sorry. We discussed just video one. I see you have video two, but we haven't gotten that far, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. we haven't gotten to video two yet. Um, I'm going to show you what your webinar needs to look like in video two. Uh-oh, and it didn't work. Let me see why not. Um, because that's going to be more of an educational class. It's going to be what, you call, what I call a pre-recorded webinar. And this is why this is why sales funnels are so effective is because people can watch these at any time. Right. This ad could be running for you at one or two o'clock in the morning and somebody can say, hey, I want to check this webinar out and they could check it out in 15 minutes and you're at home asleep. Right. So that's the beautiful part about this sales funnel process is it, it, it just back to that sidewalk thing. It's walking your customer up to your door and just guiding them on where to go. And nobody is going to come and get your customer from you on the sidewalk because they're so in your process that it's just no, you know, nobody else is going to be able to come and, and, and match kind of the experience that you're giving them. You're educating them. You're telling them things they didn't know before. You're seeing them and they're seeing you on the places online where, you know, other, other notaries probably aren't showing up. Okay. Um, and so that's going to be very, very key to this whole sales funnel being effective. All right, so for whatever reason, this, um, I might have uploaded it to my YouTube channel. Hold on just a second. It's not wanting to airdrop for me. So let me go over to my YouTube channel and see if I've got it uploaded. And I might have just left it. I don't think I've published it yet. Okay. 
I don't know why. Oh, I know why I'm on the wrong browser. Get on the right browser. Give me just a second and I will share my screen as soon as I get this pulled up. So basically the, while I'm pulling this up, let me just give you a backstory to your introductory video. That's what we're calling video number one. Video number one is going to give you a story and it's going to address a pain point, right? You have to address the pain point with your story. And as soon as I get this video pulled up, you'll be able to understand exactly what I'm talking about. But unfortunately, it didn't upload. So I'm going to try another thing. I am going to send it up to YouTube land right now. And then we'll be able to, um, we'll be able to, what can I send it to Dropbox? I need to send it somewhere. I don't know why it's not going where I want it to go. It's not making me happy. My dog is unhappy with something. Me. Your pup is making my pup up. <laughs> He's right here by my window and he sees and hears every single thing. And Mine too. I'm gonna have to let him in. <laughs> So he doesn't, yeah, he's a big, he's a big old baby. We went for a walk today. Okay, well, it's not going to work. So this is what we're going to do is to save time. I'm just going to go ahead and play it from my phone just so that you can get, get an idea of what is being said. doesn't really matter what it looks like. You can kind of get an idea from it, but hold on just a second. All right. That intro, the, the, the reason that there's not a lot of talking happening at the beginning, this is a tip, you might want to take a note on this, is that you always give it dead space, at least 10 seconds of dead space before your video starts to record. Just stand there and look pretty and handsome for 10 seconds before you hit record. Uh, that will help you be able to edit it and not have to worry about if there's any volume adjusting that needs to happen and whatnot. So here's the video. I'm waiting. Those of you guys who are new to me, I am a serial entrepreneur. I own a real estate brokerage, a small farm, and a notary business. And the other day, it hit me like a ton of bricks how the notary business could finally align with the real estate business and probably help not only me, but thousands of real estate professionals all over the country. Right? Pain, pain so point. Most of you guys have taken a long time agent training, and some of the marketing tips they've given you is hey, market to real estate professionals. And so I've taken that same training, I've heard it all, and I was like, you're right. Don't come to me asking me to do my signing on my deals because guess what? I'm not worried about that. All I know is the title company's going to handle it and that's all I care about, right? So I'm not motivated to ensure one notary signing agent over the other is doing my closing because that's the title company's job as far as my real estate broker hat is concerned, right? That's never going to change. That's the way it is. It's the way it's going to be. The opportunity lies on the front end of the transaction, right? The notary can help the real estate professional get listings. And this is so crazy. I'd never thought about this before until it actually happened with me. So a couple of months ago, I had a um, high school classmate call me up. Hey, Monica, me and my wife are looking for a house. I'm like, okay, cool. I'd love to help you. We put an offer in on the house. It was, went into multiple offers, and it was just done. But they absolutely love this particular subdivision. So I said, you know what? There's this thing that I do, and it's worked in the past, so let's do it again. Just takes a little, takes a little time, so if you guys can be patient with me, I'll get it out, and we'll see what happens. Long story short, I did this little marketing campaign that I normally do in situations like this, and lo and behold, it worked. And I can kick myself in the ass, because every time I do this, it works, which means I need to be doing it all the time, and I haven't been. I just do it when I'm in a crunch. Anyway, I digress. So one of the uh, respondents from this 
marketing campaign ended up being ready to sell his house to my clients. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. There was an issue with the HOA. Anyway, it didn't work out. So with my client's blessing and with the owner of the home's blessing, I signed up to list the property and sell it to some other uh, buyer. Well, that's the property that gave me the ding-dong light bulb moment, okay? So that property is closing next week, and it's probably going to be around a $13,000 commission. A $13,000 commission that I wouldn't have gotten had I not executed on this particular marketing campaign. I wouldn't have been able to execute on this marketing campaign had I not had an amazing assistant to help me. Can't can't, right? So here's where we are. Now that I've realized and put two and two together, and keep in mind, I've got two real estate brokers at my two real estate agents at my brokerage that would absolutely love some listings, okay? The only reason I don't do this all the time, this particular marketing campaign, is because it's very time intense and I just don't have the time to put into it. But what I said to myself was self, you've got a group of notaries who are looking for streams of revenue that are consistent and reliable, right? Why not connect the dots? The real estate community and the notary community would benefit from this both. The real estate agents especially, because listings are so hard to get, right? Everything is so super competitive right now, especially if you're in a, a, a metropolitan area like myself. I'm nearby Nashville, Tennessee. Some of you guys' real estate markets are super hot. So competitive uh, competition for listings is really, really high. And any real estate agent who wants to be in the business for any length of time is going to have to get listings. You can't just exclusively work with buyers, right? And not only are you competing against other real estate agents for listings, but now you've got these outfits like Open Door and Red Pen and all these internet brokerages competing for listings. So when I tell you that there is a problem that needs to be solved, I'm not kidding, okay? Real estate agents need help getting listings. However, people are so inundated with stuff. They get stuff in their mailbox all the time. They're getting hit in email all the time that you have to market to them in a very specific way in order to get them to respond. And so I have figured that out. How do I know I've figured that out? Because every time I do that thing, it works. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I, I get really honestly right now, just let me just bring it back in. Because when I think about all the money that I've left on the table for not doing this consistently, I get cry, okay? But necessity is the mother of invention, and that's how things go. It is what it is. You can't really cry over spilled milk. But what I can do is, moving forward, create something that allows for real estate brokers like me to be able to do this on a more consistent basis. And not only that, if you are a notary public and you are an active, licensed real estate agent, this is good for you, okay? This is going to help you get your first listing, your first land listing like it did me, an apartment complex like it did me, a commercial listing like it did me. Like I, like when I tell you this campaign works, it works. It's not something that I heard. It's something that I know from actual experience, right? So if you're a real estate agent and a notary, this is for you. If you're a notary public and you're wanting to create another stream of revenue with real estate agents, this is for you. Again, Real estate agents don't care about you as being on the back end, helping them lift their clothes. That, that, that's not really as important to them. They're not motivated to help you be the signing agent. That's not really a part of our DNA. We know the title company's going to figure that out, right? Where they need help is in acquiring listings. If you help a real estate professional get listings, you will be so busy that you won't even have time to do anything else, okay? Not only that, if you are a an investor, if you're getting started in the investment space, as far as wholesaling or um, flipping or anything, you're looking for motivated sellers, this is this technique, what I'm teaching you as far as how to get listings for agents will work for you as a budding investor as well. So it's, it doesn't have just the one application, but the big takeaway is, if you're a notary looking for an additional stream of revenue, this is it. Because let me tell you something, this is, we're coming up on the fourth quarter, and typically everything kind of slows down in the fourth quarter for everyone, right? There's things that are still happening, but it's the fourth quarter, and the real estate market just kind of takes a little bit of a slowdown, and then it picks back up in the spring. It does that every single year, right? So for notaries who are looking for an additional stream of revenue, imagine if you're able to help real estate agents during this slow quarter that's coming up get one or 
down to listings. That is going to be gold, folks. And it's so doable. It's a matter of actual numbers. That's it, right? I already have the marketing piece that works. It's proven itself time and time and time again. The only reason that I haven't done it more often than I have is because it takes for freaking ever, okay? That is the only reason that I have not done this thing like every single week. But guess what? That's changing. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a reinvestment out of this $13,000 commission that I'm about to get that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise, right? When I think about the fact that had this mailing not gone out, had I not had an amazing assistant to be able to help me get this mailing out, that I would be able to get a commission of that magnitude next week, I could really, I wonder how many more $13,000 commissions are out there. That's what it makes me wonder, right? So the, the deal is this, if you're looking for that additional stream of revenue, practical stream of revenue, right, that you want to add to your notary business and you do want to start building those relationships with your real estate agents in your community, this is the thing for you. This is what they'll understand. This is what they'll be motivated to get their debit cards out and pay you for, okay? All it's going to take is for you to be able to communicate to them what you're going to be able to do and how you're going to be able to do it and that it works and it's over with. And so I'm going to help you with all of that. So check out my free webinar, register for it, take a look at it, and then let me know what you think. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. All right, that was way too long, right, for our intro video. That needs to be cut in half for a YouTube intro video. This video is good for a Facebook post. That video is more of a Facebook post video. So I took too long to get from the pain point to the free webinar. There was too much in the middle, right? So for you all, when we start working on your um, funnel, keep in mind that your audience is different as well. Notaries have a di different tension span when it comes to teaching them about money than attorneys do when it comes to teaching them about how to grow their business. You gotta get them quick and fast. So even, and here's the other thing, let's go to the funnel. Let's take a look at the funnel. Let's see here. All right, so we're back here at the funnel and no matter if you are a Ron notary or not, you have to become the expert in Ron. No matter if you are a Ron notary or not, you have to become an expert in Ron. The reason is because your target audience needs to know about Ron. And whether or not you're gonna do Ron, whether or not you like Ron, whether or not you get the Ron commission, that's irrelevant. What's important is that your target audience needs to know about Ron and you in whatever state of Ron you are need to be that resource to provide them with that information. It immediately is going to position you as the expert, okay? Now, hopefully you are a Ron notary and it, and it makes just perfect sense already with the business plan that you're already engaging in. But your video sales letter, your four to five minute video sales letter, I think I said under 10 minutes, just don't go over five because that was way too long. This video is going to appear in an in-stream ad. We're going to go look at an in-stream ad. I'm going to show you what an example of an in-stream ad is. Oh, that's my, sorry, let me move this out of the way. Let's look at an in-stream ad. On the information that you're, hey, what's up y'all, it's Monica, welcome back. All right, that didn't do it. It's a video that's gonna play before the ad starts running. So my real estate channel is not as watched as my, as my, my real estate YouTube channel isn't as watched as much as my, no, my notary nerd YouTube channel. So let me go back over to it and share the screen there. All right. So we're going to watch an in-stream ad 
that as soon as one of these videos starts to play, you'll see what that looks like. If you're thinking about selling a house in Nashville or a house anywhere within about an hour of Nashville, this, this is an is in-stream ad. You because the real estate market is hot. You already know that. But what almost nobody knows is that there's a brand new, better way to sell that's getting sellers way better results than their counterparts who are using the old-fashioned traditional method. If you'd like to find out what it is, click the big blue button located around. Okay, let's talk about this. This is the beautiful, beautiful thing about what you are about to do. Do you see where this man is sitting? He is in his car. Do you see what he has on? He has on a t-shirt. This is not about you looking like you are a, you know, newscast professional. This is you being authentically yourself in a space with some decent lighting, okay? And in a place where your audio is not being obstructed. In the live class, after you've done some foundational training in the YouTube space, in the live class, we're going to upload this video to our YouTube so that we can actually start to target certain channels that we want our ads to appear on. This is going to be the magic of the funnel. This gentleman set up to make sure his ads showed up in front of people maybe in Nashville channels that were in Nashville. He's paying to be here. And if I hit skip ads before his 30 second mark, I think it is, then he doesn't even get charged for that impression. Just like with you, if you set up your YouTube ads, say you want to spend $10 a day, which is what at least I, I recommend at a minimum, that's $300 for the month. Or if you do $20 a day, that's gonna be $600 for the month. That's where my budget numbers come from based on what I've learned from the videos that I've shared with you. So you have to commit to that 10 or that $20 a day because that money allows you to bid for slots, okay? Let's finish watching this. And you've already heard his pain point, right? He's, talk he's talking to his audience. He's mentioned their pain about selling their house. And so let's see what he invites us to do. Let's see what his opt-in is. On this video, because sellers in Nashville, and Brentwood and Franklin and all throughout the local area, statistically speaking, they're getting more money when they sell and in a more convenient way. And what I mean by more convenient is that these sellers are not having to leave their house 10 gazillion times a week whenever there's a brand new home showing request. Nobody wants to do that. And I'm sure you don't either. So if you- I just want to stop it real quick. This actually speaks to the new thing that we're about to do. If you heard him, he's telling everyone that it's hard that people are choosing to sell their house in a different way they don't want the showings and so far and so on so this speaks to the fact of what i'm about to teach notaries how to do which is help the listing agents get listings because these companies are coming in and they're making it more difficult to get listings so i just wanted to point that out real quick you'd like to learn a little bit more about what these sellers are doing so that you too could get more money more conveniently we can help you with that by giving you the three things that can help you to sell for more money right now just click the big blue button located around this video. It's probably in the bottom left, maybe below this video, and answer a few super easy questions about your house. And then instantly, we'll send you a PDF version of a brand new book that spells out in great detail exactly what these sellers are doing. And when I say instantly, I mean, you're gonna get it in about five seconds because we're gonna text it to you because your phone is probably in your hand right now or it's right next to you. So All right, his funnel is a downloadable funnel, okay? There's his book. There's the download your free copy. Nice, clean sales funnel. He's explaining kind of a little bit more about what he was saying in his video. And there's that. Okay, that's his funnel. You click download your free seller guide. He's got some questions that he has set up for you to answer. Again, his industry is a little bit different, but this is what it looks like to take, an, to take a video sales ad uh, in-stream ad and point it to your um, sales funnel. Any questions? Yes, I have a question, Monica, about the in-stream ad. So mm -hmm. I know you said that you can gear it toward, um, when you pay the uh, 10 or 20 bucks, you can gear it toward a particular city. Can you gear it toward a particular industry? Yes, you okay. do. You can. You want to, You can target market from so many different um, aspects. 
You can do it towards city. You can do it towards industry. You can do it towards geographical location. You can do it towards ethnicity. You can do it towards household income. YouTube doesn't have the restrictions like Facebook does. Facebook, you used to be able to do a lot of those things, but Facebook got in trouble due to all the political maneuvering that was happening with manipulation of some of these fake Facebook accounts. So you can't really advertise and get drilled down on demographics on Facebook anymore. However, YouTube is still wide open. And that is so awesome because the other thing that it allows you to do is target certain channels. Let me show you something. Someone who is actually targeting a channel is a perfect example. All right, I'm on the notary to notary channel. I'm gonna add value to that, but that's not where I'm stopping at. All right, let me see if I can't get another video. Let me go to her channel and see, can I get, there we go. All right, maybe it doesn't work on the end streams, but I wanted to see if I could, this is the one. No? Okay, what I was hoping to show you is Dan Jerkowitz with um, print scan, the um, fingerprinting professional, the marketing, the marketing guy that does the fingerprinting, he taught a couple of classes. He actually has seen a lot of in inquiries come in from notaries. So I noticed when I watched some notary videos, he's doing some in stream ads. And I just wanted you to see the quality of the video isn't like, you know, super, super professional. It's just a him and his home office. The lighting isn't like professional. It's just him being himself. All right. So I'm not able to see that. I'm not able to see any uh, um, videos that are going to pop up with it. So we'll see. My credit score boosted 35 points using Experian Boost. I pre-qualified for a small loan. It might be the second one that comes up. Are How can Experian Boost help you? Boost your credit scores instantly, free. Then see your personal loan choices. Download the Experian app now. And that was ad number one. Let's see if he pops up on ad number two. Are you a notary public ah. who wants more calls every week and more signings? Look at the background. Cheap cost per lead. Well, in this video, I'll show you how one of my clients, Barbara, a notary public in Orange County, is making a thousand dollars in signings for every hundred fifty bucks that she puts into Google Call Only ads, guaranteed. So follow me to my computer screen. And I'll show you the inside of her ads account so you can see exactly how this works. All right. So here we are on the inside of Barbara's ad account. You can see in the last 30 days, she spent $950. Now she's making roughly a 7x return on her ad spend, which means she's made $7,000 over the last 30 days. How cool is that? Would you want to make $7,000 next month? It's possible if you know how to run Google call only ads. And this is what they look like. They'll only pop up on a mobile phone when someone searches notary near me. Your phone number pops up at the top. They click it, you get the phone call. Google will only charge you maybe five or six dollars for that phone call. And at an average of a hundred bucks on the appointment, imagine making a hundred bucks off of five dollars in ad spend. Wow. So I want to invite you to a webinar where we're going to show you how to do exactly this. But first, I want you to listen to one of these calls because Google actually records these calls. Uh, we'll, we'll listen to one right now. You're going to hear basically people are very uh, happy that you're able to accommodate them the same day because most of these people who call in want same day service. Uh, you can see here we're on, we're on result one through 50 of 98. So she's gotten 98 phone calls in the last 30 days. Would you want 98 phone calls next month? Well, it's possible if you just set up these Google phone call ads. Uh, let's take a listen here. Um, here we are, February 4th. Uh, this call is about two minutes. Let's just take a listen so you can hear what a typical call is like. Hi, Nick, can I help you? Hi, is this the mobile notary? Yes, it is. What can I help you with? What are you doing right now? <laughs> uh, this is Jim Carmen. This, this, oh, shoot. 
Okay, well, well this I mean, is. I can help uh, you after. Where whereabouts are you located? Newport Beach. Well, I live in um, Newport, so I can okay. come as soon as I'm done walking them. Is that all right? Sure, that'd be great. Oh, awesome. Okay, um, text me your address, and then I'll come over. Okay, it's at my daughter's house, so I will get her, her address, uh, and I'll text. I'll text it to you. It's in Diana Lane. Okay, perfect. So, then I'll respond. Right. So you know that I got it, and then as soon as I'm done, I'll head over. Okay. Okay. And what is your typical right. charge for this? Is an escrow. Which what well, is your charge for that? Well, how many signatures do you think it is? Are you buying or selling? Uh, well, it's my daughter. I'm selling. My daughter's buying. We're both going to be in the same location. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. So, um, the way it works is um, my travel fee is fifty five zero, and then fifteen per signature that I notarize. So you'll be notarizing the grant deed and okay. um, certificate of trust if you have it in a trust, and then yes. she will be notarizing. Is she getting a loan or? Yeah. Okay. Is she, All right. is, she, well, is she? Yeah. Is she and her husband? So she and I will be signing tonight. Her husband's out of town today. I'm leaving tomorrow. So um, they'll, they'll, he can figure out the third signature. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Just text me the address, and then I'll head over when I'm done here. Thank you. Okay. My and your, what's your 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 name again? Barbara. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. I'll see you in just a little bit. All right. Bye bye. Okay. All right. So his sales funnel is a webinar sales funnel. That was actually a really good call. Uh, I'm sorry, a really good ad for us to stumble across because I haven't heard of those Google ad um, uh, advertisements, the call only ones that he was talking about. That was the first time I'd ever heard of that. But hearing that call, it was definitely something that piqued my curiosity. But anyway. So here's his sales page. It goes to his free webinar. Again, he's targeting notaries. You're going to be targeting attorneys. So your scripting and everything is going to be about what solves their pain. Right now, their pain, the only thing you got for them right now is Ron. Even though you might think, okay, let me talk about the mobile aspect. Yes, those things are good, but they're already understood. And you don't need to explain what's already understood, right? What you need to be is that person that's differentiating yourself from everyone else and discussing Ron. Again, even if you are not a Ron a notary, the, the thing that you have that's a benefit to you is you have access to Ron notaries through your networking, okay? You don't need to worry about the fact of if you can do Ron or not. Right now, this video sales letter is specifically for educating pulling those attorneys into your funnel, specifically using the remote online notarization content, period. Don't try to make it about anything else, okay? So here's his sales funnel. Is it, is it, it's very simple. How to quickly add five to 10,000 per month in notary signings and Google phone calls, without da 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 uh, What you'll learn on this free webinar. And see, watch what happens when I click, watch the webinar now. What do I have to do? I've got to enter his funnel. As soon as I give him my name, my email address, and not only that, he wants my phone number. So that means he's going to probably follow up and give me a call. Can you do this on your funnel? Absolutely. All right. So here's, here's how you get into his. And then if I was to enter all of this information, guess what? The webinar would start right away. Because the second video that I'm going to show you that we're going to talk about here in a minute is your long video. That's your webinar video. I'm going to go show you the webinar video that I'm about to do. I haven't put the voiceover on it yet, but I'll show you it in a presentation because that's what you want your video on your webinar to be. It's not going to be with your face. Your camera is not going to be on. It's going to be educating the viewer about whatever it is you brought them there to educate them about. Right, so I'm going to make a note of this website. I'm going to put this in the chat so we can reference back to it. And then I'm also going to make sure I put it in the um, course. 
Let me go do that now before I forget. So that when you go into the YouTube's ad training, it will be under the sample um, video, sample webinar sales funnel. I'm typing it in as we speak. I'm not sharing my screen quite just yet, but when you log in to um, the, the Attorney Marketing Funnel Bootcamp, it'll be there. All right, it is officially in there now, the one that we just looked at. Now where I'm gonna take you is over to Canva, starting a new share so you guys can see that, to show you what the webinar content or what your presentation should resemble. I created my presentation using a template in um, Canva. It's very easy to use their templates. You don't have to get all fancy dancy. A tool that you will need, okay? A tool that you will need is a software called Snagit. Snagit allows you to video record in a very professional way. Snagit.com is the website. I will show you the website, put it in the chat, and I will also add it to the course. You do have an opportunity to get a free trial, but this is going to change everything for you, okay? I would not start this free trial, as per usual, until I had my video figured out, my funnel built, I wouldn't do anything with Snagit until I had at least my introductory video done and, and I had started building out my click funnel, which means that I have executed at that point my 14 day free trial. Okay. So you don't want to grab Snagit because I think Snagit's um, free trial is only, let me see how long. You might be able to start them both at the same time. Let's see here. How long is the trial? I want to say it's, I think it's 11 days. It may be 14 days. It may be, it may be a good idea to do them both at the same time. I think ClickFunnels has a 14 day free trial. Snagit has a 14 day free trial. What you're going to use Snagit for is to grab your screen. Right now, I, I've got Snagit pulled up. And if I want to hit record, I hit that red button down here at the bottom of my screen and it would begin recording everything that's happening. But it, but it can't do this and Zoom at the same time. But the point is, Snagit is going to help your presentation. When you go over to Canva, if you choose to use Canva like I did, you'll have a presentation that's very professional looking. And it will be you talking in the background. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to help you know what you need to know about remote online notarization. Because in order to do a webinar like this, you have to go back to college, piece together that information you found and you learned along the way, put it onto a presentation. How many of us have done a PowerPoint? Anybody? Is there anyone? Let me ask this. Anyone who has not done a PowerPoint presentation? I went to school for all that. Okay, good. So, so you already are familiar with creating a PowerPoint presentation. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. So I'm going to run through the slides for my webinar because I have already completed my funnel for the notaries. I'm going to go back and adjust my intro video. I'm going to make it shorter. I'm going to make my webinar video however long it needs to be because at that point they're at home, they're drinking their coffee, they're playing with the cat, they're comfortable and they're listening to the webinar. So it's okay for that to be a little bit longer. My other video that I'm gonna use for my in-stream ad, it needs to be less than five minutes, really probably four minutes, okay? You need to get to the point and get to the point quick. All right, so here is my webinar funnel destination, what's gonna be playing. I'm gonna record this using Snagit. Once I'm done recording it, I'm gonna put it on YouTube. You want a nice clean template you want to appear professional. You want to get an outline first of what you're going to say before you do your presentation. I'm not going to teach you guys how to do a presentation. You already know how to put one of those together, okay? This is the outcome of me doing those steps.
And the template makes it so easy. And these slides, of course, I'm gonna be talking over these slides as I go, right? You want the person focused on the slide. You don't want to be the focus of the presentation. This is that webinar that's gonna be playing at two o'clock in the morning, at three o'clock in the morning, okay? Sunday at six o'clock in the morning when you're making coffee, somebody's gonna be watching your, somebody's gonna be watching your, your webinar. Uh, an attorney who just passed the bar, an attorney who's looking to go out on their own practice, they heard about this Ron thing, they wanna know more about it, and they went to a, an association meeting and people were talking about it, and lo and behold, they were on YouTube learning how to start their own law firm and here this notary's video comes up and talks to them exactly about what it is they're trying to do. Okay, so this one has about 15 slides and I finally finished it up. Now I just have to do the voiceover to educate the whole, um, the audience about what it is that I have to offer. Now let's talk about your offer. At the end of your webinar, remember you're gonna go get the content for your webinar. You're gonna teach Ron how you want to teach Ron from your business's point of view, right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna necessarily, you know, um, say I've, you know, if you've done 15 Ron signings, great, talk all about that. But remember, it's not about you, it's about the pain point that your client, your potential, your, your target audience member has. And what they what they need to know is what Ron is, okay? You need to act like they don't know what it is. You need to start from there and then you need to bring them up to your state's laws. And maybe I'll put this in a little bit of an outline, starting with what, what is Ron? Then what does our state say about Ron, right? And if you want to, you can leave that state specificity out of it or just include it and say, this is how we do it in North Dakota. However, every state is different. OK, you can add that because just because you're you're targeting one audience doesn't mean that you're not going to get people from other states that watch your video. So you don't want to necessarily make your video necessarily state specific. It's OK for you to let them know what state you're in, but you don't want to seem just exclusive to your state because you're not. You have a network of notaries all across the country that once these leads start coming in, they will not have a problem conducting Ron loan signings out of your app. Monica, I have, I have a question very quickly. Sure. Um, I don't mind learning everything I can about Ron and educating people about Ron. Um, in Georgia, we don't have Ron. So I know you said that we, even though some people may not be interested in Ron, you still have a network of people who do Ron, but how does that benefit? me with Ron. Okay, great question, Suzette. Since you, and you're a perfect example, a, a, an attorney state who has not yet adopted Ron. So Georgia is making it pretty clear that, hey, it's not going to be easy to build a notary business down here, right? And so how it's going to benefit you is your app, which is free. Once you've deployed this marketing, you're going to get hits. You're going to get people who need Ron. So you're going to pull notaries into this app. The notaries can join for free. However, they're going to need to compensate you on each Ron signing as a referral. So your, your whole situation will be a referral-based situation. It'll be passive for you. You won't have to do any of the work. You won't make the big bucks because you can't charge the $65 or the $75. However, because you are what we call in the industry making it rain, you're bringing in the business, okay? You've got the free app. Now you'll be able, once you graduate from boot camp, you'll be able to go into the Notary Nerds Facebook group and say, hey guys, I've got several attorneys on my app. I'm looking for a few, few raw notaries who would like to join my app for free so that when they need you guys, they can send a text. All I ask is that you pay me $10 per sign or $5 or whatever your number is, right? And so that's how your Ron video sales process will work. And, and honestly, that's the, that's the business model that I would actually prefer. I don't want, I'll set up the infrastructure. I'll get the app. I'll go do the sales page. I will do the marketing. I do not want to do the technical work. I want to find someone else to do the technical work. So Suzette, you're in a really good position. 
Um, once you get all the pieces together to get this rolling, and I would probably focus on states like Tennessee and Texas and Florida. They have established RON laws and lots and lots of notaries who have a difficult time getting their own RON business. Great question. Anyone else? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so back to talking about the offer. So my offer for the notaries is talking about, hey, this is what I'm gonna, this is what I've got. This is what all the stuff is worth. And so this is the total value of it. And this is what it's gonna cost you today, okay? So with you, because your offer is gonna be different to the attorneys, your offer is about getting them, if you can, to subscribe. It's a big jump, right? Because, hey, you know, they, they have to know that there's value in it, right? They have to know that there's value in it. And the, what they're subscribing for is access to your Ron notary. So let me go back to that sales funnel. There's a lot of moving pieces and parts, but you will be able to go back and rewatch this. I'll get it, get the new funnel pulled up. And then when you get through with that, Monica, I do have a, a question on uh, what the, uh, the last question that was just answered. Okay. You want to go ahead and ask it? You can go ahead. Yes. Um, okay. So, and, and, and this is just my opinion. I kind of, as far as with $10, just $10, just for a notary coming through my uh, tunnel, I kind of disagree with that. Um, because my, my goal was to build a team of notaries, like, uh, for example, let's use a title company, for example. Okay. When title companies hire us, um, or they, they find us work, basically, that's what they're doing. They're basically finding us work. Correct. They get a percentage off of our signings. Don't know what that percentage is. Um, because a lot of times I don't be having time to read the documents, but they're getting, we, we don't, you know, when we go out here and do the signings, that's why they pay, you know, so much because they're getting a portion of that cut with the, what the uh, loan company is paying them. Right. Why we could not do that with other notaries, not, not as high as they are, but you got to look at the fact, okay, we're going to be paying not only for the 600 for the, the, you know, advertisement or whatever we're paying $7 75 or whatever it is a month for the subscription. Okay. And so $10 per notary, just because they're coming through our channel. No, we would need a profit as well too. That that's just my opinion. Okay. It's almost like, it's almost like, you know, allowing, you know, other notaries to come through my, you know, through my business, uh, you know, you're not really, I'm not, not saying it's free, but you're not really benefiting off of $10. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it real. You're not. All right. All right. I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Somebody tell me who is she taking care of? Is she taking care of her target audience? Who is Urania taking care of? Who is her primary concern in what you just heard? Suzette? Herself. Myra? Her, herself. She's watching out for herself. Okay. But she knows, she knows that she's put out X amount of dollars in order to start drawing in this business. So I understand where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. And she probably wants to be able to recoup that. Right. And if you are not getting a lot of um, people, you know, referrals, then you're going to be putting out money maybe for quite a while before, before you recoup. So I understand that. Okay. But the, but, the, but the thing I want to point out is they both had the same answer right off the bat, right? Mm -hmm. who, who brings in the money? The customer. Right. Oh, okay. So you have to adjust your model so that it does take care of you. But you also have to remember that if that's the, if that's the primary goal, then what's going to happen is it may not match up with what your target audience needs. Okay. Wayne, you have your hand up? Um, yeah, I think that, um, uh, you know, Urania has a good idea to take care of herself, but the exact figures probably 
we don't have all the uh, all the correct numbers right now. I'm thinking she just needs a little bit more time to put it all together. Right, I think so too. That's I what I was thinking too. You know, I'm listening and writing everything down, but you know, everything that you say may not apply to me in terms of the ten dollars. But you know, once I figure it all out, it may be ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars, whatever the case may be. So what, what I want to make sure you guys understand is rookies try to get all their money off the front end. Mm -hmm. I repeat, rookies try to get all of their money off of the front end. Okay. I want you, I want to encourage everyone to think in terms, not of scarcity, but of abundance. All right. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind your knowledge. And those of you who have learned about Ron, you already know the challenges that are involved with the platforms. There's dozens of them and they nickel and dime the notaries to death. If you're going to bring notaries on to help your who target audience, you have to factor that into your pricing. Okay. Your, your whole goal is to be of service to your target audience, which is that attorney who is in need of remote online notarizations. If you charge a notary $25 to be on your app, in addition to the fees they have to pay to do the notarization online, on top of the profit they have to make, and you're trying to get all of your money out of each notarization, guess how long your business is going to last? Okay? No, ma'am, I didn't say all my money. I didn't say, I said a portion. Well, I didn't, a portion, my money. A, I didn't say you did say all of your money. I'm talking, right? What I said is you have to be aware of who you're serving. And no matter what you want, the market dictates what's going to happen, okay? The market dictates whether or not a notary will sign up for your plan, okay? So that's what's going to end up happening is the numbers, like Wayne said, will get crunched. Everybody will look and say, hey, is this a worthwhile pursuit for me? Can I come on to this app on her behalf and work on this platform or get assignments from her? and afford to pay her $25? If so, then great, your model works. If not, then you wanna look from an area of abundance and remember that this has no cap. Just because you hear $10 doesn't mean that you're only gonna make $20 a week. If you only have two signings, that's only $20 a week. However, if you have 100 signings because you've got 50 notaries or 25 notaries in Florida and 25 notaries in Texas that are raw notaries and there's 50 of them and your YouTube ad is generating all kind of webinar watchers and you've got 200 attorneys watching that webinar a week signing up to, to do your, uh, whatchamacallit, then guess what? $10 a pop doesn't sound so bad for work that you're not doing. So I encourage you to think in terms of abundance People hear $10, oh, that's not enough. Rookies try to get their money on the front end. I've been in business, self-employed for 10 years. I'm not telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I know. If you try to get all of your money on the front end, you will not be able to survive. You have to, be, you have to come from a place of giving more than you receive. You do, mean, you do need to stay profitable, but that could be done with scale. That's where abundance comes from. You don't think about just 20 notaries. You think about 50 notaries doing one loan signing, Ron signing for you a day. That's $500 a day that you didn't have to drive around for, that you didn't have to print anything for, okay? So this business model, when it comes to the referral, should not be focused on, well, I've got to charge the most in order to make sure I get my money back. No, I need to know what number makes me profitable. How many notaries makes this worth my while? Yes, Myra. The other thing that you mentioned is um, if we have attorneys that get subscriptions yes, with us, was, yes. because okay. you have the money with the subscription coming in, and then the $10 from the other notary. That so it's a combination. Part, that, thank you, thank you. That's where we were going, was that part, was the offer. What is your offer to the attorney who is your target audience in this sales funnel? If they want access to this app full of remote online notaries that they can access anytime, they've got to pay for that, 
right? So your offer after the webinar is over with. So that screen that I had up that kind of talked about what happens next, that is going to be your, this, this screen here is going to be when you make your offer, it's going to be that monthly subscription. Okay, now what you charge them, we don't know, we've never done this before, we don't know what the market will bear. But we do know from past Notary Nerd University trainings that attorneys view things in terms of a billable hour. Everything they do in their practice is based on the billable hour. They are going to take and break things into thirds, okay, for the most part. So when we were discussing this on a meet and greet, uh, a gentleman who was an attorney, he had passed the bar, I don't believe, but he had gotten his Juris Doctor. What he explained to us when I asked him specifically, what do you think we should price an attorney subscription model at? He explained the, they're taught in law school to take a hundred dollar bill and divide it up to put a third of it into operations, a third of it into something else, and a third of it into something else. So that one hundred dollar bill, thirty three dollars goes to this, thirty three dollars goes to that, thirty. All attorneys, he said, are taught that in law school, right? So with that being the case, you don't want to go above a hundred dollars, and you might not get any any leeway on the ninety seven or the 67, you probably have to stay under the 40, the 37, okay? Now, that subscription, that office, that attorney office, now all, they, you're not breaking the bank because why? Rookies do not try to get all of their money up front, okay? I mean, sorry, rookies try to get all of their money up front. Old heads, experts, Vets do not do that because they know that once they get you in the door, they're going to get the money when they keep you where they keep you. You don't try to just bust heads up front thinking that I'm never going to get any more from them. No, you get that $37, you get that whatever that is for you, whatever your market will bear, okay? And you won't know that until you try it out. You'll know if you get a whole bunch at $37 in the first 90 days or whatever, after you roll this out, people are watching your web webinars and you start seeing your account, people subscribing, then that means that number probably works and you probably could have jumped it a little bit, okay? Maybe you run a separate webinar with different pricing. I don't know. My point is this. If you've heard from, if, you've, if, you, if you know that the, that the law students are taught about this this breaking this hundred dollar bill up into thirds. And you know that this is something that they're gonna wanna keep and you wanna keep for a long term, then keep those things in mind when establishing your pricing for your subscription. They cannot get access to your raw notaries. Your app gives them access to, you know, you and your team as far as your mobile and your RON or whatever you wanna do. But if they want to expand and have some nationwide coverage, matter of fact, that's probably what you should say. Join my VIP attorney group and get nationwide coverage, asterisk, and then list the states that you actually have Ron notaries in. That is the value. Now that attorney when his client is in Texas and has a property in Indiana or in Costa Rica and has a property in Kentucky or in Tennessee and is traveling to Florida, whatever the case, you're solving the potential future problem for them of not being able to get something notarized. Also, a part of your content in your webinar needs to speak to the fact that Remote online notarizations are, 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 are more likely to be held up in a court of law if challenged. How do I know that? Because I read that article that I uploaded in the course for you that was written for the ABA. This is why you need to read and get as familiar as you can with the remote online notarization process, industry, articles, whatever. Because that nugget is one of the things that I put here on the actual funnel. So let's go back over to the funnel and let's look at that nugget. And when you read that article, that's not the white paper article, it's the article that was written by an attorney for the ABA and it referenced 
the fact that those uh, online notarizations are more likely to be held up in a court of law due to the knowledge based authentication as well as the recordation. Not too much can get challenged with those things. Attorneys like to hear that. Why? If they're in a state attorney, then they can be more, the more they can rest more assured that that family member who may want to come and contest the will is not likely going to be able to do that because of this notarization having been electronic. There's less, there's less room for that. That was just a little nugget of knowledge, knowledge. And so here you can see where I use that knowledge. Let me close this pop up here on the sales funnel. I'm using that nugget in point number two. Knowledge based authentication and record and recording ensure notarizations are held up in court. Why am I saying court? Why am I saying held up in court? Because I'm speaking the language of my target audience. Everything is about them. How to grow your, um, I should call this law practice with remote online notarizations instead of how to grow your business. So I need to change that. Protect your business from the pandemic. Reserve my free spot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up for this. If I'm a new attorney and I'm, I'm going to know about this because why? The notary who did that video had targeted me on YouTube because what that notary did is they went to YouTube to discover which law channels are the most popular. Well, would you look at here? I typed in how to start a law firm. That would be my target, some of my target audience is watching these videos. So I see this video starting a law firm from two years ago, but it's got 10,000 views. How I started a solo practice, I'm definitely gonna be targeting my ad, my in-stream ad to show up on her videos, okay? She's got 5,500 views. Let's go take a look at her channel real quick. If you're thinking about selling a house, it Oh, well, would you look at there? He's paying a lot of money because he showed up on her ad, um, on her video as well. So she's got 2,000 subscribers and she does seemingly pretty consistent videos, okay? And her videos, some of them have, you know, just 172 views. Some of them have 908. Here's the one that has 8,600 views. How much do lawyers make, okay? So all of these videos are potential targets for my in-stream four-minute ad telling them to come watch my rep webinar about remote online notarizations and how it can help them grow their law practice. Any questions so far? So this is further down the line. You almost don't need this until you have gotten your click funnel sales funnel built. Nothing, nothing matters until you, you started that subscription. And remember at the same time, you're going to start your Snagit subscription, which I'm going to go ahead now and put that into the, um, into the course before I forget. Let me go put Snagit. All righty, let's see here. Let me put that in here. Say hello. Andrew the cat, is that you? It's Andrew. Hey, hey. Andrew. He is such a handsome guy. He's, He's a big my, boy. Uh, He's my buddy. How old is he? Oh, um, I don't know. He's probably about eight years old. He's a handsome tabby cat. Yes. All right, let me get that Snagit website. So, so far what we've done in book club is give you the tools and, and minimize your expenses on those tools by, by instructing you to only use them when you're ready. Only start your free trials when you are ready, okay? And if you don't have your database all the way built yet, then you're not, you're not ready for to start your, your trial, okay? You can start this, uh, you can start utilizing what you've learned um, by doing the email campaign. And we've already talked about that. 
So yes, Myra, your hand is up. Yep, I sent out 218 emails today. <laughs> I got all my emails sent out. You better go, Myra. No, I got one person who responded. She just replied to the email. Nobody's gotten into my funnel yet. Okay, no so problem. I can use that person who responded to me for future emails, correct? That is correct. Tell us a little bit more about what the response was like. The response was just one line said, we will keep you in, in mind for notarizations. Wonderful, call. wonderful. Good job, Myra. That is what you want. Yes, the, and I saw you did put that question into the chat. Yes, you do want to include them on future emails, but only when you're giving them something that they wouldn't be pissed off about getting. It's okay. not going to be just an email, just to send an email. It's going to be, just wanted to let you know, the Secretary of State just passed this new legislation that affects remote online notarizations. This is something that I like to stay up on and wanted to share it with you. Here's the link directly okay, perfect. To, to the code. Has to be hefty, has to give more than what you receive. Correct. If you do that at every touch and not worry about trying to get everything in one stop, then you will see your business flourish. I promise you, trust the process, okay? I was, the, I was that person that had to get everything up front. Well, I'm gonna charge $197 for this by God. I spent all my time for it. I'm gonna charge, I don't care who can't afford it. I'm just gonna, da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna charge $497 for this. I might have four or five people that did it, but if I had have been smart, when I, when I, I didn't get, I didn't get to that level of understanding until May, when I started learning from Russell Brunson about click funnels. And when he said, rookies try to get all their money on the front end, I knew immediately he was talking about me. Okay. I knew immediately he was talking about me because I was always trying to figure out like Urania, how do I get all of my money? How do I not leave any money off the table in that first interaction that first interaction needs to be almost free i'm not saying it has to be free but it needs to be darn near free people are hit with too much gimme 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 and if you're just another gimme to them they're not going to join your funnel they're not going to take advantage of what you have that's why every single funnel example that we showed i showed you tonight from that real estate agent to that gentleman that did the Google call ads, gave you what? Something for free. Yeah. It, it, there's a reason why people are doing it amongst different industries, folks, and that's because it works. Any questions? Okay. All right, well, it's 9.13. I was going to go to 9.30, but if you guys don't have any questions, I think this will be a good time for us to go ahead and conclude, allow you an opportunity to start watching the YouTube's uh, ads training videos. I will be developing an assessment that will have questions from both video number one and video number two. Once you pass that assessment with a 90% or better, you will get an invite to a live training where we will be doing our, our ads together, okay? Monica, I have a question um, okay. in regards to the real estate information. You um, is that course coming up soon? Because um, I do have my real estate license, but I was just trying to understand a few things. So is that course coming up soon? Yes. So next week is my kids' fall break, so mm -hmm. I'm going to be rolling that out. I was going to take a, a kind of a break between boot camp mm -hmm. and, and starting that, and so next week is going to be a development week for me specifically for that. My funnel is already built, but so I will start putting my funnel out there. I'm probably going to use next week to do that. But because of the fourth quarter coming up, this is going to be like perfect timing to start it in October because we'll be done with it by the end of December, 1st of January, when real estate is super slow mm -hmm. and agents are going to be hungry and we'll be in time for the spring market. Okay. So, so we will be doing that. Give me... I'm not saying next week. I, I initially, I wanted to roll it out next week, but I just won't be able to get it all together mm -hmm. until that following Monday. Okay. Well, right. Along those lines, I've got something else. Um, the realtor who helped my husband and I buy this house, 
she contacted me today because today's my birthday and she wished me a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Myra. Thank you. Thank you. So what does Myra do in response? She, she Facebook messaged her back and said, gee, I've been wanting to get together with you and sit down for coffee. I want to talk to her about this thing that's coming up with the realtors and with doing the, the handwritten envelopes and everything. Yeah. I need to have my act together and know more about it. So okay. I sit down with her. Absolutely. When are you planning on sitting down with her? It's going to be sometime next week, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, let me do this. Let me just give you some, some key points right now. Just real simple. Okay. So what you want to do is help her get listings. And so what you're going to do is you're going to be doing a personalized direct mail campaign to out of state property owners. Okay. Okay. And those terms, you're talking her language when you use those terms. Okay. You're, when you say listings and when you say out of state property owners and she's going to say, okay, well, that's great. Well, how, how are you going to do that? Well, either you're going to give me access to your MLS or you're going to send me a list of properties. You, she, you can show her how to, how, to, how to do it. But what I'm going to do in the, in the training is I'm going to provide a little video so that, so that notaries who don't have access to the multiple listing service, they can shoot that link to the, uh, their potential real estate client and say, hey, if you could just watch this video, it's a couple of minutes long. It'll show you exactly how to pull the list from your tax record. Okay. Email me that list and I'll get to work. Perfect. And okay. so that's, and, and so, and then you're going to seal the deal by saying you personally, personally know a real estate broker who sent out a hundred mailings and got a four, $439,000 listing from it in the last 30 days. Okay. Perfect. And I'd be happy to talk with her. Okay. Just to close the deal for you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yes, Monica. Yes. I did not understand the process. Not a rookie. I know you weren't calling me that, but I'm just trying to, you know, just, no, I'm not trying to over kill, uh, overcharge anybody. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not in debt. No, you're right. You know? Right, right. And, and when I, this is the, this is the thing. You are on the right track because you're profit minded, right? Yeah. yeah. The challenge is with a lot of self-employed people is putting the customer before them. So mm -hmm. that's a, it's a hard balance to make sometimes. But, right. But that's the that's the most important thing because in this model where you're doing the referral, you have two customers. You have the notary who's going to be doing the work and you want them happy because you want them providing a good experience for your attorneys. And then you have the attorneys who are your other target audience who you're helping solve their pain. So it's a balancing act. You have to mm -hmm. figure out how do you make a profit while at the same time providing excellent service to these attorneys and having a happy group of, of notaries who are happy to be there to do those things for the attorney. Mm -hmm. So it is a, it's a balancing act. So it's, it's not something that we're going to figure out necessarily overnight. And then don't forget this too, Urania, you are mm -hmm. a disruptor. You are a part of doing something that has never been done before. So you will be able to kind of, you know, play with things a little bit just to see, but I want to make sure that you understand and consider that always come from a place of, okay, I don't necessarily need to bust heads on the front end. Mm -hmm. I can get them in, okay? Even if it is $10, I would, I, honestly, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this so I can show you. I'm gonna do the exact same business model that you're doing and everyone else is doing, but I'm only gonna charge $5 per notarization. I don't even care if I can charge 10. The reason I want to charge that notary $5 is because I want them on my app. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the marketing so that I have enough volume, right? Mm -hmm. I have enough volume so that I've got 20 notaries and I've got this video sales letter running 
And this attorney, these attorneys are just, just coming for me, coming for me, coming for me, coming for me. And I've got these 20 Ron notaries that are doing all of my, or 30 or however many, and I'm just invoicing them at the end of the month. And guess what? Some of them aren't going to pay. I know that going in. It's a part of business. So guess what happens? I have an independent contractor agreement in place. I will pursue it. I will collect my money, but they will come off of my app. And they will no longer get that nice flow of, of, of signing. So, so, but for me, just to illustrate a point, that $5 is what I'll use. I don't even know if I could, if there's room for seven or 10 or 15 or 20, because because why? I know that if I, if I do that on the front end, my notaries are going to stay on my app a lot longer because all they got to send me is $5. They're going to think twice before leaving my app because they're getting all of these signings and all they have to do is pay me $5 a pop. If they go to another app, they might have to pay $10 or five or 15 or whatever. But they're uh, on my app, they're they're only going to pay five. So again, mm -hmm. it's about abundance. So to me, it's more important to keep them there and happy, go get them as much business as I can throw their way. And, and keep in mind that for the most part, I'm not paying for anything except for my ads. Now, wouldn't, couldn't you, okay, like we have a subscription with you. Couldn't we have a subscription for that? Absolutely. Very, very good, Urania. Okay. You can have a subscription on both sides of the app. You okay. can have a subscription from the attorneys to access uh -huh. these Ron notaries. And you can have a subscription from the notary to be able to be on the app versus okay. a, a per notarization fee. That is genius. Okay. Good thinking. Just don't charge them $100 a month, you're right. No, nah, I'm not going to charge them. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to charge them. Okay. I don't, I don't think I'm more like 15, but okay, I'll keep it. There we go. There we go. Good, good. Thank God. Yes. Urania ain't playing no game with y'all today. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Are there any more questions? Nope. I'm good. Awesome. Well, this was it, guys. Attorney Marketing Funnel Bootcamp is almost over, but as per usual, I am not going to leave you nor forsake you. We still have work to do with regard to doing our ads, so please do watch these YouTube videos. Do as well as you can on the exam, which will be on Monday, okay? Um, so do what you need to do over the weekend to get your database complete. Remember, in order to graduate from bootcamp, you have to either have 100 or 200 that names in your in your database um, in order for that to have to be been considered complete. And we need a copy of your funnel. Now, for those of you guys who aren't doing your click funnel yet, we'll give you a, a, a reprieve on that. Just as long as you've got your database up and running, then that's all that matters. I need you to have some means to market in order for this funnel to have been a, a productive use of your time. Now the <laughs> assessment on Monday, is that going up at a certain time or? Yes, before 11.59 p.m. Okay. Before 11.59 p.m. CST. So if you want to wait till Tuesday, you can look at, wait at Tuesday. I might get up there in the morning and get it done, but it could be later on in the evening before I'm able to get to it. So that's why I put that 11.59 p.m. Okay. Yes, Wayne. About the number of attorneys. Um, I, I'm on the trial subscription for the click funnels, but I'm not going to continue it. I have worked on a funnel, so I'm going to try to do it, do a funnel just to get the practice. So um, when you say number of attorneys, I've got a list of over 200 names, but I, I don't know how many emails I have. I have maybe 60% have emails. Right. Okay. So at some point, I was thinking, pick up the phone and try to talk to the receptionist and get an email. You know what? That that or LinkedIn um, would be a good use of time as far as getting the emails. A lot of times, you can find them on LinkedIn. Every now and again, 
you can e you can Google them and get their uh, Google their name. And this one of the search results will come up with some of their contact information and sometimes the email is included in that too. Okay. Have you tried to, have you tried that yet to fill in the gaps? I've been on websites, you know, a lot of them have the contact me page, which yeah, yeah. does not have an email address. Wayne, would yes. I want do you want to email me what areas you cover? And yeah. let me see what I can pull from the ABA and send you a list. It's not neat and pretty, but it a lot most of them had email addresses okay i will do that thank you okay very. and i did what myra had said the other day she went on her state's bar um site yes and the emails that i didn't have for the attorneys i just typed in their name up under up under the state bar and then the emails came most of the email except for two everything all the other emails came up when i did it for georgia um for, for the state of Georgia, for the bar. Well, let's look at it. Let's look at um, this, since Wayne and I are both in Tennessee, let's look at the Tennessee Bar Association member directory. Okay, so I don't know if you've got your list up, but I'll go get your list real quick. And so we'll see if we can't um let me see if i can't find it oh there it is okay the attorney database let's go down here can you guys see my screen okay yep. yeah and if the name didn't work i would try sometimes the um the name of the firm yeah all right let me get both of my screens pulled up at the same time so we can do this at the, we're gonna look at Wayne's database and we'll see, I think Wayne's all the way at the end. All right, so let's find one here that did not have um, an email. I think we just passed one. Let's go back up to the top. Okay, let's look at Ted Angelakis. So that's Ted, and let's put Angelakis in there and see what we come back with. All right, Ted Spiros Angelakis, but no email right off the bat. Let's see if we click on it here and still no email, but there is this little contact card. So let's click on it and see where it takes us. Um, let's allow. Okay, something happened here. I think that was a, it's asking me if I wanted to add a contact card. Okay, I guess I'll say yes. All right, I was hopeful that it had extra information, but it didn't. All it did was pull over his telephone number and his address. So that didn't work. So let me do one more thing. And Ted and Jalakis, let me go to LinkedIn. All right, so LinkedIn is the, the best database um, when it comes to, you know, people, professional people. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to search for Ted Angelakis. Just in hopes that I could possibly find a email. So that's a construction man manager in, in, in Maine. So that's not our guy. So it doesn't look like he has a presence on um, LinkedIn. The last thing I'll do, and this is what we learned over in direct mail marketing um, for reverse mortgage applications. We were trying to find um, uh, branch managers and, and the like. The last thing we do is we just actually Google the person's name, Angelakis, and there's an attorney review returning. Okay. So I'm just scrolling the results just to see if I have any email. And it doesn't look like it. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Okay, let's see this legal directories here. 
And if that's the case, we just move on because we don't want to spend too much time going down too many rabbit holes to try to find this guy's email. If they don't have a, a generic email from their website, um, then it may be worthwhile, Wayne, just to pick up the phone and call um, to, um, to get that email. Now, your gatekeeper may want to know why you want his email, so I don't know how you're going to deal with that part of it, um, but that definitely is going to be something you can do if you want, is just to pick up the phone and call. But I wouldn't spend too much time on, um, I wouldn't spend too much time searching for it. I'd do two or three searches and I'd be done with it. Let's see here on Yelp. And it may be that he's strategic in not wanting an email. Sound, it looks like honestly this particular gentleman is, but let's check with Olin Bailey. Let's go and check one more um, at the Tennessee Bar Association member directory. We're gonna go back over to search and see if we can bat 50 out of 50 out of 50 on this. O-L-E-N, Bailey. And okay, no results. All right, let's see if we just do Olin. He might be listed as a Bailey Jr. We have an Olin Hayes. And we have an Olin Hayes Jr., but we don't have an Olin Bailey Jr. So it seems like it's just going to be a little bit of a hit or miss. What I would do before I started filling in these gaps, Wayne, and taking up time doing that, because that's a lot of administrative time that you just don't have, really, right? Your time is better spent going ahead after the ones that you do have emails for. And that's what I would do is I would make sure... I sent out my emails to these people who are already in my database and I see a lot of duplicates. So I would be very careful not to do any mass emailing. It looks like you've got, probably after you drill all these down, you might have 50 or so, 60 or so unique email addresses. Mm -hmm. I would focus on getting those out and seeing what happens from that. And then after I've, after I've done that is when I would go try to fill in the blanks on these, or by that time, Myra will have probably you a little list sent over that you can add to these. All right. All right, any more questions? No, no questions, but a comment. You guys, all you guys were on a DoorDash ride with me. I've been DoorDash the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uranium, you are a hustler. I tell you what, girl, you are on it, honey. I am not mad at you. Well, you guys, <laughs> Friday night, get off of this computer, go enjoy your families. Thank you very much for participating in the Attorney Marketing Funnel Bootcamp. Um, I hope you got some value out of it. If you could let me know, zero is I didn't get anything out of it. Ten is I got a lot out of it. Uh, five is eh in the middle um, that will help me develop some uh, and improve upon it for our next our next session. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I appreciate you guys very much. And you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Good night. Good night. Good night.